Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. I'm happy to be back again after a short break um, because of my tendonitis. As you know, I still have problems with my right hand, so this is very annoying to me. But uh, yeah, I'm back again. I'm coming back to this matter in a few minutes. But first of all, let's have a look what we have done in the last episode. In the last episode, we built this beautiful habitat for our African wild dogs that are right here in their holding pan and having a feast right now. Let's have a short look at their beautiful habitat in here. Yeah, I really do like that. In today's episode, we are going to extend the area where our okapis are living. By the way, we have a pregnant one. I don't know if I have said that in the episode before already, but uh, yeah, we have a pregnant okapi. So maybe in the next episode, we might have a little baby. Yeah, we are going to extend the area for the okapis and I thought what animal would better fit in there as another animal that lives in the same area as the okapi does. So we are going to build something for the beautiful bongo antelope. Um, yeah, so now first of all let's get into my recent health issues. Um, as I said, I still have problems with my right hand, still have some uh, doctor appointments uh, before me and to figure out what it is in the end and how we can fix it for good and uh, not just for a few weeks and then start with it all again. So hopefully there will be a solution to the problem very, very soon. I will keep you updated on this. Uh, but what does that mean for the channel and for my projects in here, like Brooksburg Zoo, Litchfield Zoo, Siebentischwald and, uh, and also our contest that is going to end or that you only have time to send in your entries until Wednesday. Yeah, it is Wednesday, the 15th. <clears throat> um, yeah, that does mean you are going to have new content like you have today, but I'm not going to be able to get back to uh, yeah to to a clear schedule. Because that just would not be possible for me right at the moment. So that means that there's going to be a new video from time to time as soon as I can finish it. Because I think it would be best for me to only play Planet Zoo for like an hour a day. To not overdo my hand and start with all the matters again. So that doesn't mean that it will take me much longer to finish episodes. Uh, for example, I built on this habitat here like uh, three or four days. And uh, yeah, after providing you with the video uh, of Brooksburg today, I'm going to start building in Litchfield Zoo again. So there's going to be a new episode in Litchfield, not this week, but I think next Monday. So I will keep those uh, days. It will mean um, new videos from Brooksburg are only coming on Mondays and new videos of Litchfield are only going online on Wednesdays. So that's going to stay that way. But as I said, maybe about every two weeks there's going to be a new episode right now until the problem is fixed for good as I said. Yeah but now let's get back into building. So uh, what you are seeing here is something that I uh, did for the last builds as well. I was first of all going to create some wall pieces so I can put them easily together to make a nice stable for our animals. I didn't want to have the complete same stable as we had for the okapis. I wanted to I wanted it to look a little bit more simple because it will not be a walk through shelter for the animals just 
yeah, just uh, some simple build, I'd say. Yeah. So that's why I chose those arctic wooden pieces uh, mainly for the wall structure and those planks on top of it those australian planks which made a lot of sense to me because you won't see these uh, very expensive uh, concrete made buildings all around the zoo because you would have so many of them because um, you need you need a shelter for almost every animal that you have in the zoo you can't keep them in only in their outside uh, habitats you uh, yeah you definitely need a shelter for almost every animal that you have in the zoo because uh, of weather conditions when an animal is sick or something like that you always will have or need to have an intersection where you can separate those animals or where you can lock them up during the night uh, to yeah to secure them secure them to save them to prevent them from being attacked by predators or something like that or hurt themselves uh, break out or whatever um, so for that reason it would be yeah it would be pretty much more normal that you would have an indoor shelter for almost every animal and um, most of them won't be that heavily built I'd say like those shelters that we have for the African wild dog and especially for the okapis. So I did something that would be a little more cheap on the cheaper side. After doing that, um, and you will see that later in the video or at least when we are going to tour the finished habitat and also having a little backstage tour, I remembered or I thought about the fact that the bongo is a tropical antelope so tropical animals might have a little bit difficulty if they are in a cold shelter so in Germany it is uh, yeah it is called no it is not called Kalkstall <laughs> Um, you know what I mean um, you won't be able to keep them in a cold shelter where they don't have any heat in there because especially in the winter when it's cold outside and there is snow those animals can cope with those temperatures only for so long so they will need something where they can get back into and warm up a little um, <clears throat> just so they, they, uh, they don't get sick or severe health problems. So I decided to build something like heaters. You can also find those heaters uh, in the workshop. I will put the link in the video description so you can download it from there and use it for your own zoos, as well as those gates for the indoor shelter that I'm going to build in here. Uh, you can also download it from uh, my workshop. Yeah, um, because that is, uh, yeah, with those heaters, as I said, that is something that you will see in many of those shelters for the animals, especially for tropical animals. Uh, yeah, because you, you will need to have a warm shelter for those animals. Yeah, right now I'm building the boxes for the animals because... Um, yeah, you would have something like those boxes where you can separate the animals, especially for um, most of the hoof stock. Because when you put them in their stables after the zoo is closed, you would want to separate them so that they are safe and they don't can uh, and they can't harm each other. Because as you know, antelopes have very especially the bongo have very long and sharp horns and if there is something going on with uh, those animals and they uh, feel like they have to attack another animal or defend themselves they can easily hurt and 
in that case when it uh, when they can't run away from each other they can easily not just hurt but kill each other so it would be very uh, necessary to be able to lock them away separate from each other and only let them get together when they are outside in the outdoor habitat yeah that is uh, that is one of the main reasons why you have those separate boxes in the stables for those animals Yeah, and as I tell you something about the bongo, um, I have some uh, very exciting news. I'm going to start with my real-life zoo tours very soon, um, unfortunately in German language when I do that, but uh, I hope you will enjoy it nevertheless. Um, I have the first permissions to do some videos in uh, some German zoos. Uh, the first one is going to be the Wilhelma in Stuttgart which was a little bit of an inspiration for me for uh, those builds in here uh, especially for the build for the Okapis and we are going to see uh, those habitats for the Okapis and for the Bongos and the Wilhelma and also are going to see some young animals not some babies because they are already a year old or so uh, for the Okapis. Yeah, that is something that is coming to my channel on a regular basis during the summertime. So we are going to visit some nice and exciting zoos, not only in Germany but um, around Europe. There's also going to be a video from uh, Salzburg Zoo and um, Zoo Straubing in Germany and I'm also planning to do some videos for some zoos in the Czech Republic that I'm visiting on a regular basis so like uh, the zoo in Pilsen and especially the zoo in Prague yeah um, so we are in the second part of the video second part because this was the second day that I was building in there I wanted to have something like those feeders that you see for uh, many of the hoofstock animals. So I used those metal beams from the aquatic DLC to create something like this. And you will see in a few minutes that I'm going to put some plants in there as well to make it look realistic. I copied those around and had one of those in every uh, box for the animals. That is something zoos are doing. Um, never mind because of the uh, metal pieces that look through the wall outside. We will cover that in a later stage. Uh, when we are going to continue building all around the, that area right here. Yeah, uh, back to those feeders. That is something that you will see in many zoos as well. In the shelters for the animals, not uh, just those feeders, but that they are feeding the animals most of the time inside of their shelters. Um, that has, oh, yeah, the simple reason that you are able to get those animals back in the house when you do it like this so that the animals know okay at this time of the day I'm usually getting food and uh, the food is always provided to me on the inside of the habitat um, that they have a reason to get back into there because you yeah you might understand if you didn't do it like this, why would the animal get into into their shelter when it uh, has no reason for that? So if you have everything on the outside and on the outside is everything pretty and nice and you have sunlight and, uh, and uh, fresh air and stuff like that and you have food outside, you can play and you have room to roam around, why would you go inside of your shelter? So that is the reason why most of the zoos or nearly all of the zoos feed their animals inside of 
the shelters so that the animals have a reason to go back in there and make it easier for the zoo staff to lock them up during the night. Um, yeah, and that is also something that you might have noticed when you visit some zoos that animals have a very great timing so they exactly know at what time they are going to be fed so many of them are waiting outside of the shelter and sometimes knocking at their doors like the elephant bull the asian elephant bull in um, munich that i visited on my zoo tour there was knocking on the outside of uh, of the house against the door because he wanted to get in because he knew that it is exactly that time of the day where he is going to get his food inside so uh, yeah animals have a very very great timing when it comes to that Yeah, that is also true for uh, the cat that I have um, because he always knows exactly at what time he needs to come back inside um, to get his food. So um, yeah, he's working better than any clock uh, that you can have. <laughs> Yeah, and here is my favorite part of every building, building roofs. I just don't like it, but I think I managed it uh, pretty well in here. And I got very much into detail and uh, putting those wooden beams all around and having uh, something like a real structure in here that actually would help the building to yeah not collapse so we have a lot of support in here and I really do like how the whole thing looks especially from the inside as well when we have a look at it later when we are touring that building I really really do love that building it is kind of simple um, especially when it comes to the backstage area I didn't put that much stuff in there yeah, but I really do like it. Um, when it comes to the backstage area, I had an idea because someone mentioned it in one of my last episodes of Litchfield Zoo. Um, and because I, most of the times I don't have any ideas of what I could do with the backstage area, and so backstage parts always looking very similar because I don't have any new ideas, and there's only so much you can do in those areas. And in, yeah, as I said in the last episode of Litchfield, or in one of the last episodes of Litchfield, someone told me that I could do some of the outside uh, stuff with, uh, with some kind of a shed where you have the hay and, uh, and trash and uh, stuff like that outside. And uh, that is something that I'm going to do in here as well because the plan is that we have uh, this stable for the bongo antelope right here and on the back side we're going to have a holding pen for the bongos um, you have seen the gate already on the inside and we are also going to connect at least one other shelter to this building where um, then right now might change in the future you never know what planet zoo has in uh, uh, has in store for us with the next dlc that might be coming in a few weeks um yeah where was i yeah the plan right now is that we are going to have a habitat for the warthog on the other side so um behind of the bongo habitat on the other side of one of those okapi habitats that you could see in the background right now um, close to that there's going to be a warthog habitat and i want or we definitely need to have another habitat on the other side so um, we're going to have a path that connects the area where the african wild dogs are um, along the bongo habitat towards the Okapi outdoor habitat that you can watch when you are not 
going to go into the Okabe house. Um, I hope you understand what I mean. So the, the, uh, there's going to be another habitat. Right now I don't have any idea what animal I would put in there. Thematically it would be perfect to have a habitat for the pygmy hippo there and there's definitely going to be something for the pygmy hippos uh, in that area as well but I wanted to have something like a smaller habitat around there. You might see it in the end of the video, maybe a little bit when we are touring the habitat um, so that you get an idea of where the yeah, where the habitat might be in the future. So maybe if you have any ideas what animal we could put in there that doesn't need too much space, uh, let me know in the comment section and I will be very happy to build something for those animals. Uh, in one of the next episodes. Yeah, so here I'm going to build the shed that I was talking about. Just very, uh, yeah, very simple. Um, just something uh, to keep all the stuff that we are putting in there mostly dry and prevented from uh, the sun because we are also going to have uh, the poop of the animals in there and we don't want it to get heated in the sun and cooked and um, smell all around the zoo. <laughs> And here I use those containers that we got in the conservation DLC. Very happy about that stuff that we got in here. But I, I do think that we still could have more of those. Yeah, and once again, keeping it very, very simple in here. Thinking about going back into this for a little bit of a detail work off screen and having a look at that area when I finished the whole area here around. So nothing special, just some little details. Yeah, and here we are in the third and the last part of our build in the, uh, today's episode. We are going to take care about the actual habitat for the bongos and also for some stuff around it to make it look a little bit nicer. So doing something with the path for our keepers, decorating it a little bit with some of the hedges that I made myself and also putting those fences around. And I really do love the view in here when you have to look along the path and see the building for our bongos in the background. So that is something that I really do like. Here you can see what I mean. Yeah, and I also think I have to get back into this because, uh, yeah, I noticed uh, when I did the video that I definitely had to do something about this because it doesn't look too realistic with those fences around here. Um, we have to do at least something at the bottom of it because uh, just like this it wouldn't make that much sense. Yeah, putting some concrete pieces on the floor as well. Uh, here you can see in the background I had some problems with the terrain but I used it 
very clever or very smart, I might say, I used those reed roof pieces to create something like, uh, yeah, something for uh, for the hay for uh, our habitat. I'm uh, not quite sure. I think I have to create something like a roof on top of it as well because you won't uh, you won't uh, you don't want to. You don't want the hay to get wet when it rains because that would not be great especially when it rains and then it gets heated up um, it might get bad and you can't use it for the animals anymore so maybe I'm thinking about creating something like a little roof on top of it uh, off screen and I'm going to show you that when it is finished Yeah, here I did something for the inside of these containers to make it look a little bit more realistic and not to have it too empty. Yeah, and I'm really happy with the outcome here. So, time to create the fence on the visitor side finish the actual habitat for the mongo antelope I wanted to uh, I wanted it to be yeah very similar or almost exactly the same as we had for the okapis because I want that whole area to be as cohesive as possible because uh, yeah everything should be connected to each other and should make sense like you would see it in an actual zoo and uh, yeah. I also did put those fabric pieces around there because I thought that would make sense for the animals that they don't get too stressed out on every side of their habitat so I put those pieces on uh, those fabric pieces chain link fences around not everywhere because I thought I want to uh, I want my keepers to be able to look into the habitat of the animals when they are going backstage and they at least should be able to see the animals from the backstage area as well yeah here's some terrain coloring And in the end I was very um, stunned because I thought the habitat might be a-okay for our bongos but uh, not too big and uh, not too small but in the end as I had a look at it the animal was almost three times as big as the animal uh, as the animals would have needed it to be. So I was very, very in awe for that because, yeah, it is it is a little bit bigger than the habitat for the okapi, but the bongo doesn't need that much space as the okapis do. So we needed like I think. 300 square meters for three bungos so we will have two females and one male and uh, we have about 900 square uh, square meters so it is way bigger than the animals would have needed it and uh, still it looks to me like a decent and realistic size for an actual zoo habitat like something that you actually would see in a real life zoo as well. A little bit of rock work in here, not too much. As I said for the Okapis, you don't want to have too much rock work in those stuck um, habitats because you don't want your animals to get hurt or that, uh, that they break their legs or something. So I tried to be a little bit decent with that.
some trees again. Try to put in the same trees that we have in the Okapi habitat and also not too much of those trees. Uh, yeah, for sure, the bongo antelope lives in the Congo and lives mostly in, uh, yeah, in the forest. So it would be very grateful if we have a lot of trees uh, and stuff in here, but to be realistic, we won't have that much trees in, in an actual zoo habitat, especially for hoofstock when they are going to feed on the trees. Um, so that is not possible. That is why I used those things here once again to keep the animals from feeding on the trees and um, destroying the tree bark. And once again, not having too many trees in here. A little bit of the bushes, um, not too many of them as well, because the bongos will feed on those bushes as well. Because they are not like the okapis that mainly feed on leaves. Um, but the bongo also eats the grass. Yeah, for the last part here, just putting some plants in those planters in between, like we had for the okapis as well. And then I did something in the wild dog habitat. In the last video, um, I had a comment from a PS Vision that asked me how to get those boxes into the building. Because those boxes are pretty big and the doors were very small. So I decided to put some bigger doors in here in the meantime. Um, it is not completely perfect right now, but I'm going into that as well off screen. And uh, one thing that I did as well is something Thomas Freaks mentioned in, um, in the last video. Um, for those mechanics for the gates for the animals, um, he told me that it would look nicer when I had uh, something different uh, than those uh, metal pieces from the aquatic DLC uh, for the keepers to uh, hold on to. And he told me to use just a minute. I'm going to show you uh, because I don't know the word in English for that. Yeah, he told me to use this piece from uh, the conservation DLC because it would look uh, much nicer, and he's absolutely correct with that. So I changed that up in this episode. Yeah, and now we are completely fine with that. So it is time, I think, to go back into the real-time part. So let's have a look at our zoom map. You can see I actually uh, updated it. We have the bongo on here now. And we are going to take a look at our animals. I also updated the signs in here, so you don't have uh, just the okapi and the wild dog on there, but also the bongo. So let's have a look at it. I love the view to the backstage area right here. This is something that I really, really enjoy. More than the habitat, actually. So here you can see the animals are already in their habitat. And with the dry mold that we have in here, it really looks that we can get so close to the animals. Here's the signs that I created for those animals. Here's the male one, has a little bit uh, darker skin around the neck and the face as well. 
and we are going to go into the backstage area right now. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to leave you alone in a few seconds, so if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future episodes of Brooksburg Zoo and also my other stuff on the channel. And uh, yeah, leave a comment, tell me what you think about this, how you like it so far. And now we're going to have a look at the backstage area. Here we have the holding pen for our animals. And now we're going to have a look inside the stable. And here you can already see on the right side and on the front of the building, I put in the heaters. As I said, you can download them from the workshop. I put the link in the video description. So, okay. So I'll leave you alone with some footage of our animals in here. Have a great time and I hope you tune in the next video as well. So bye guys.